Hey everybody, this is going to be our first tutorial on Lua inside of Codia. Codia is an amazing app that I've really begun to really like inside of the iOS system here on the iPad. And right now I've connected my iPad to my computer. So on the right side you see the output and on the left side you see the actual code. So we're combining them both together so that we can run it simultaneously, which is pretty dang cool. And uh, we're going to talk about the different types today. You've got numbers and strings and booleans and functions and yes, ton of other things. So let's get started here. On the left side, we're going to actually just start writing our code. And the nice thing about this using the computer is I can use the mouse, which is pretty effective. So if I just come in here and I put a four and I refresh my page and there it is, four spits out on the output on the console. And that's really, really nice because it actually tells the computer what's going on here. This is a specific number, so I can do four plus four, hit refresh, and obviously it'll spit out eight. Same thing here, I can do four minus nine, and refresh, and it's gonna give you the output of negative five, which is pretty obvious, right? So it's gonna do any math equation for you. You can do division, you can do multiplication, it's going to give you this nice 0 0.777 repeating. You can multiply it as well with the asterisk, which is shift 8. Boom. So try several of those, if you would, and put in um, several different math equations and do some big ones. See if you can figure out um, how to do specific things, which are really, really cool. You can do exponents with that little caret, and this is going to give you a much bigger number. It is going to do order of operations here first, so obviously it will go with the 9 to the 5th power and then multiply it by 7. All right, so try some on your own there. This is for the number type. All right, did you come up with some pretty cool math equations? I bet you did. Here what we're going to do is we're going to label it. This will be our numbers section. So that'll pop out. And then down here, we'll come back, and this is going to be our strings section. And a string, string is just anything. It's a word, it's a, uh, a number, actually. It's something that the computer recognizes as data, but doesn't do any math with it. So for example, I could come up here and I can type in print, and if I put quotes around the four, uh, now watch what happens. It's gonna still print out four, isn't it? Yeah, it's still going to print out four, but to the computer, it can't do any math with it. So for example, if I hit plus four like this, it's going to give me an error. No, it's not. It is smarter than I thought. No, that is really, really cool. Let's see if it does it with this. Ah, Lua, you are amazing. It actually takes the string value because it's in quotes and it will do math with it. That is beautiful, isn't it? Very, very cool. All right, so strings, for example, are things like hello words, all right? Now, let's see if it works when we put plus four in there. Ah, error, it doesn't like that. Yes, it's saying, stop it. You can't add words with numbers, idiot. Don't do that. Yep, that's exactly right. So strings are with quotes only, and you can do variables with this as well. So for example, if I put a variable in here as me equals my name, Boom, all right, and then we say print me. What do you think it's going to print? Well, it's gonna print my name, isn't it? It's actually gonna put my name in there. So if I wanna put my real name as Pelican Tacos, boom, what's it gonna print? Pelican Tacos, pretty awesome, right? Yes, very, very cool. That's a string. So something that you can use as a particular word or input value, that kind of thing. That's what a string is. And we'll learn more about those later. Next thing we can do is we can combine these together. So let's just say me is that. We can now print me. And if we do two dots and then we do is my name, it is going to bring these two statements or strings together and make one little statement. So it's going to print out Pelican Tacos, and then it's going to print out Pelican Tacos is my name. Actually, Pelican Tacosis, which is not really my name. That's my name. There we go. Awesome. So it's going to bring them together, which is pretty cool. All right. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is what's called a Boolean. Not a spice you might put in your soup. No, that's Boolean. 
very close. Let's do Boolean and make this a Boolean section. And what this is, is we'll just say X equals true. Oh, good. All right. X is true. Did you know that? I didn't know that. X is true. Cool. So now what it's going to print at the very end, it's just going to print out the value that X is true. It's either right or wrong, true or false, zero and one kind of thing. It's back and forth. And what you can do now too, is you can put a not X in there. And what is not true? The other word is not true, otherwise known as false. So it spits out false there. Okay, so that's pretty obvious. And you also can print out not false, something like this. And it's going to print out true, false, true. All right, so these are Booleans. These are things that spit out and they tell you whether or not it is true. We can do math statements with this as well. We can test and compare. For example, if I start printing and let's do does one equals equals one. Is that true or false? Everybody in their uh, normal mind should be able to know that that is true. So it's going to spit out true. Now I'm starting to get a little um, confused over here on the right side. So I'm actually going to delete this. So now that I know that that is the only one, that one does equal one. Woohoo! One does equal one. Does one equal zero? I don't know. Let's see. <gasps> Lua, you are so smart. It does not equal one. It is false. Very good. And so, for example, you could do more equations. You can do, is seven less than zero? Uh, no. Is seven less than or equal to zero? And boom. No, it is still less than or equal to zero. No, it is not. All right. So, but if we put negative one, seven and we do negative seven here, so here is seven less than or equal to zero, negative seven, true. And is negative seven less than or equal to, yep, it is. It's gonna print out true this time. Whereas something like this is seven less than seven, that's gonna print out false. Whereas what do you think this is going to print out? All right, it's giving two options there. That should print out true. So the last one is false. That one is true. There's several different things you can do here, but these will also work. There's one more comparison type of comparison that we can do, and that is with the squiggly. That is in the top left, usually under your escape bar. And so if we say is seven squiggly not equal to seven, that means seven is not equal to seven. Is seven not equal to seven? Uh, last time I checked, it was false. And Lua also agrees with me. So that's really good. I appreciate that. Same thing with, let's just try variables. Does A equal, not equal? Let's try B and let's see what it does. Uh, yes, A does not equal B. And if I were just to do it without anything, that would mean that it is a variable. We have not defined it. And it says, is nil not equal to B? And it says false. Not sure what that means. Good luck in figuring that out on your own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to delete the Boolean section here just so we can see the more output on the right side. We're going to go to the nil section here. Nil means nothing. And for example, I've not created the variable of y. So let's just do print y. And it doesn't know anything right now. So it's going to print nil. It says, uh, dummy, you haven't done anything with y yet. We don't know what y is. You've not stored anything with y. Whereas now if I came back and I set y equal to a string of y, and it's storing the letter y inside the variable y. It, what's it going to print? Can you guess? It's going to print the actual string y. Whereas if I delete that, now it doesn't know what it is. It's going to go back to nil. It just doesn't know that. And same thing here. If I come back and I set y to equal a number, uh, let's just do 3.14 for a pi. Yummy. Boom. There it is. 3.14. It pops it right in there in the output, which is really, really cool. Uh, a couple of things here to notice in terms of how we actually set a specific type. Um, I can come in here and this will be, it's called dynamic typing. And A can equal to 1. And then A can equal to me. And A can also equal to a table later on. We will talk more about that, but if I print A, now it's not gonna know what a table is, so let's put me here first. And then it's going to go with the most recent one, which is me, so when I do this, it's going to print out the word me. And if I did it the other order and one was the last one, it would go in order, line 17, 18, and 19, and then it spits out 
that in order, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, a couple other things we can do here is we can actually figure out what the type is of a particular item or variable. So this will be a query. We're going to query the particular type. So for example, let's figure out, let's print A and the type of A. It, when this, what this means is you're figuring out what does A actually mean? What is the type of A? So what can you guess what it is? All right, let's see. Let's run it and see if we can get it. So it says me and then it tells me, oh, it's a string. Does that make sense? Whereas if we switch these orders and let's put a one here and now let's run it. What's it going to print? One, it's going to print out A as one and it's going to tell me that it's a number. It's a number there. Okay. And then let's see if this works. Will it tell me it's a table? Let's try it. Uh, it does. It tells me, oh, it tells me there is really nothing stored in the table. That's what the table colon zero one seven eight F A C D zero. But at the end there, notice it tells me that it is a table. Okay. We can store a whole bunch of different values in there. All right. So those are the basics of working with specific types and how do you recommend that you go ahead and play around with a lot of these to figure out, you know, what, what are you going to use for specific things? Looking at maybe the draw section down here, what goes in here, do numbers go in here, do strings go in here and so forth. So have fun playing with the types there. Definitely play with this query of figuring out what is a particular type and have some fun with the quotes and the equal signs and the comparisons here on this first tutorial in Lua. Thanks for joining me, guys.